Welcome to Shep Rambles, where I am Shep and I tend to ramble about what? Anything and everything. And this time we're going to talk about buying a new car. Is it a good idea? Well, we've got three individuals here. Um, this here is Kevin O'Leary. This is uh, Suze or Susie. It's S-U-Z-E. I guess it could be pronounced either way, Orman. I, I'm not sure who she is. I know Kevin O'Leary, though. Uh, David Bach. And so these are apparently uh, billionaires. I know I know he is. <laughs> it looks like he's kind of like giving you a lecture here. And this kind of looks like a fake smile. And this is it looks like a genuine smile. It's like, hey, you know, nice to meet you. All right, anyway. That new car smell... It's just not worth the cost. Okay, well, you all know that when you buy a new car, drive it off the lot, it's instantly lost value, just like that. You were to turn around and, and sell it, you wouldn't you wouldn't get your money back. Here's what Star well, you wouldn't get as much of it back. Uh, here's what Star of ABC's Shark Tank, Kevin O'Leary, the best-selling author of The Automatic Billionaire, David Bach. And the best-selling author of Women and Money, Suze, I'm going to say Susie, Susie Orman, have to say about why you shouldn't sink your savings to a brand new car. Okay, so Kevin O'Leary says when you buy it, you're losing money. Yeah, right off the bat, you're losing money. Owning a car simply isn't worth the experience. Um, we bought, we, okay, we, yeah, we did buy a new car, but we were getting out of a lease. And... It was the best decision at the time because um, we wanted to get a car that was reliable. So anyway, that's a whole nother thing. Cars cost a fortune in maintenance and insurance and just amortization, which means as they go down in value, you're losing money. Let's say I pay 25000 for it. Two years later, it might be worth only 12000 Instead, O'Leary suggests taking advantage of public transportation and using ride-hailing services such as Lyft and Uber. Getting driven around is actually cheaper than owning your own vehicle in several major metros, including Chicago, L.A., and New York. O'Leary says your money is better spent on other financial goals, such as paying off debt and saving for the future, rather than buying stuff you don't need, like a car. Now, I don't know. Having a car, especially if if you got to work, I don't know, I'll tell you, I don't like driving. There's a lot of crazy people out on the road, and I get anxious. Uh, well, I mean, we got rear-ended because we were sitting at a stoplight, and it was it was red. We were sitting there and stopped, and people came up right behind us and hit us. Um, you know, my daughter was in an accident recently, and she's okay. But she was pulling out, making a left turn, and this car was like almost out of nowhere, just speeding down the road and, and hit the front end of the car. Of course, my daughter was at fault because she was pulling out into traffic, but still. But, so yeah, I mean... I guess with Lyft and Uber, that's not too bad. You know, just call them up. They're all driving around town looking for people to drive. Call them up, get a ride to work. Um, that Maybe that is a good idea. And then you can take all that money um, and, you know, put it into stocks and stocks and bonds, things like that. David Bach, nothing will waste more money than buying a new car. I think getting maybe a used car might be a good idea, but nah, then again, you got all that maintenance and stuff. While it's tempting to splurge on a new car, especially when you're young, Box says it's the single worst financial decision millennials will ever make. Nothing you will do in your lifetime realistically will waste more money than buying a new car. Most people have to borrow money to be able to afford the expense and uh, Bach asks, why would you borrow money to buy an asset that immediately goes down in value by 30%? 
Instead, he recommends looking for something that's coming off a two or three year lease. That car is almost brand new and you can buy it at that 30% discount. If you're still tempted, consider how much owning will cost long term. If you're spending $500 a month for that car, well, that's $6,000 a year, not including the car insurance or the gas. That could be two months or three months of your income. Run the numbers and then ask yourself, do you really need that car that, that nice? Or could you buy a car that's less expensive, maybe a little older, but still looks good and still runs? Now, now there, she, now, now it looks like she's smiling. Susie Orman. The second you drive that car off the lot, it depreciates. See, that was something I said towards the beginning. She says, buy used cars, because unlike a home, a car will never increase in value. Second you drive that car off the lot, it depreciates 10%, 20%. She also recommends that you do not lease. Yeah, you know, we did that twice. <laughs> We were in a situation, I don't know, I don't want to get into it. I personally think you should never, ever, ever, ever lease a car. Do you hear me? <laughs> That's this picture up here. <laughs> Do you hear me? <laughs> no? Uh, when you lease, you're spending lots of money each month, but in the end, you have nothing concrete to show for it. If you don't have the cash to buy a car, right, it's perfectly fine to finance one, but make sure that you won't need to make payments for longer than three years. If you have to finance it for longer than that, then you can't afford the car that you're going to buy. Ours is financed for five years. <laughs> I'm not giving you advice, okay? Well, okay, I am giving some advice because I, I agree with what they're saying. Um... Again, there's a lot of background information behind why we leased, why we got a new car afterwards. Yeah, we probably could have done something different. It was just the situation. Once you get a car you can afford, she says, keep it as long as you can, ideally for a decade or more. That's what rich people do, she says. Yeah, they, they get more than one car, too. Most people I know who are really wealthy, they keep their cars 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And that's what she does herself. All right. So uh, this article is uh, from CNBC. Make it. So I'll have a link in the description. That way you guys can check it out. But yeah, I agree. Um, don't get a, you know... If you're in a situation where you don't have to get a new car, don't. Um, if, if you can get away with not having to drive, you can bike to work or take a bus or that Lyft or Uber. Um, I haven't run the numbers myself, but I can see where they're coming from. So if you've got that ability, then yeah, I would say... I would say this is good sound advice, but I don't know. That's it. Uh, tell me what you guys think. I'm interested. And well, other than that, I'll see you on the next rambling video. Have a good one. I've got tons of other ramble videos if you enjoyed that one. And if you didn't, well, I have plenty others to choose from, like the ones you see on your screen. Just click to watch. Simple. Easy. Even more easy is to click the station logo and subscribe. Yes. Do it. Do it.